Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. I so admire these nymph cockroaches. Their ability to reproduce without the contribution of their male counterpart. Waka waka. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode 238, recorded July 26, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. My name is Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-hosts Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Uh, first up, joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the living dead girl and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. How you doing, Crystal? I'm fabulous. I'm really excited about tonight. I, I, I get really excited when we have someone cool with us. Not that y'all yeah. aren't cool. Y'all are super cool. And I'm very cool. But he's probably way cooler than us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, I should have introduced <laughs> our guest first, but I'm going to go to Bill next. Yeah, no. Save uh, the best for last. Next up is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, and I'm going to say it's special fix guru and <laughs> also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the 1970s and a published author. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually I was going to bring my book and I. It keeps the book handy. Yes. Rom. Yes. Rom. Uh, by name. Demonic but Lawyers. You know, which is kind oh, of yeah. Rom, demons right? versus Lawyers. Okay. Who wins? We all do. Um, listen, <laughs> when, we got, when we have someone like this on, you can drop the whole part about special effects guru because it's a little <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> like. Yeah. No, Here comes the caro syrup and food coloring. Okay. Her. Well, and Pat Hutt unfortunately could not be with us tonight. Yeah. But fortunately, uh, our good friend, special effects artist Ralph Miller, found oh, wow. us a yes. uh, stand in oh, yeah. that worked on this film. Uh, so Julian Ledger is with us. How are you, Julian? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm really glad that I could join you guys. We're, We're glad as well. well. Thank you so uh, much. Looking, for looking forward to to what, what's going to be asked. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> and, and so I'm going to warn you. I'm going <laughs> to warn you that uh, people that if you go look up his credits in IMDb, the uh, credits for the movie we're doing tonight are all screwed up. They the stuff that's in IMDb does not match the stuff that's on the end of the film, and there are plenty of people missing. Um, I believe Julian is listed on the film as a puppeteer, uh, which, which is I did do. I did do that some puppeteer. Probably not the so biggest part. Technically correct. So, uh, <laughs> and as is Ralph Miller, but they're neither one of them are listed on yeah. IMDb as having anything to do with the movie. So, hmm. um, well, we also decades of horror at Gruesome Magazine partner with Play Now Media, who has a wide variety of streaming channels uh, julian what are your favorite kinds of movies uh yeah. that is, that's a good question i think i lean sci-fi more okay. than anything else i mean I they little probably little have a half a dozen they probably have a half a dozen different uh sci-fi subgenre channels they've got classic sci-fi sci-fi free sci-fi <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. There's also a Sasquatch channel. Am so, I in the wrong place? Did I did I land? All Star Wrestling <laughs> channel. Yeah. So a Sasquatch. Is there really enough content for a Sasquatch? Oh my yeah, god. Never yes. Never mind. There that is. was a dumb question. Yeah. Well, I, I did a yeah. I did a panel for Dragon Con. It's oh my god. There's so many of them. So anyway, um, episodes of all of the decades of horror are on uh, Play Now Media, in particular. Decades for the 1980s is on the Wicked Horror TV channel, as well as our uh, the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. So check us out there. You can get uh, stuff for free that will have ads, uh, although you might be blocked from some of the premium content. Or if you pay a subscription, then you'll get to see everything. Yeah. All right. And as everybody knows, we do have, uh, this is a spoiler podcast. I mean, it's, it's a... This movie was made, what, 35 years ago? So if you haven't seen it, you should stop right now and go watch it. Or listen to what we have to say and watch for what we tell you about. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever trips your trigger. 
our film today is The Nest from 1987 or 1988, depends who you believe, um, directed by Terrence Winkless, screenplay by Robert King from a novel of the same title, published in 1980, as uh, it was Eli Cantor under the pseudonym Gregory Douglas. The cast includes Robert Lansing, Lisa Langlois, Frank Lutz, or Luz, Terry Trees, Stephen Davis, Jack Collins, and Nancy Morgan. The production company is Concord Pictures, uh, associated with the Cormans, or owned by Roger Corman. The producer for this was actually uh, his wife, Julie, I believe. Um, filmed in California, in Bronson Caves, Coldwater Canyon, Venice, Studio City, Malibu, and here's where we run into more IMD uh, weirdness. The uh, director, uh, Terrence Winkless, and the commentary on the Blu-ray keeps talking about the the lighthouse they went to in Oregon, and IMDb says it's in Washington. So, hey, who knows? At Cape uh, Disappointment. What a great name. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Isn't it? Cape Disappointment. Cape Disappointment. <laughs> uh, they started filming in May 1987, I believe. Uh, it was a 25-day shoot. Uh, and according to him, it was a five days a week thing. So here's where the uh, mixed up release dates comes. Released on uh, 20th of November, 1987 in Dayton, Ohio, which must have been a some kind of sp special premiere, maybe. Uh, and countrywide, May 13th, 1988. Box office, $3,765,000. Everything is the nest wherever you look. The, the German one, I I always like the German titles. Das Nest, Brutstade des Grauens. Hot bed of horror. Oh, that's cool. I like that. And the synopsis. A biological experiment goes haywire when meat-eating mutant roaches invade an island community, terrorizing a peaceful New England fishing village and hideously butchering its citizens. Yeah, that's good. It, that's is, about it, it. it is pretty hideous. Mm -hmm. It's, it's there, accurate as opposed yeah. to some of the others. <laughs> I put this guy in because he's my uh, he's my uh, favorite character actor from this movie, uh, known as Shaky Jake, and he's wearing a Boston Red Sox cap. So there's another plus for him. Oh, wow. that's that's awesome. I don't know if he was ever in a movie where he played Ernest Borgnine's brother, but he should have been. <laughs> he he does been. look a lot like him. Well, I kind of skipped over uh, your introduction a little bit, Julie. Do you want to tell us uh, and our listeners how much, a little bit about what you do? And... Uh, yeah, I, I haven't written anything down. I'm just going to go off the top of my head and see see how much I can remember. Sure, sure. Uh, That's what we do. <laughs> I've been working in the effects industry in LA for at least 35 years. Since the blob is in the 34 years old, it's going to be at least that long. Um, I started out doing creature stuff and I, I've done some miniature effects work uh, over the years, even for theme park stuff like Disney. And, and mm -hmm. There was a company called Landmark Entertainment Group that did a whole bunch of miniatures for, they were doing architectural miniatures for this mall in Japan. It was all very sort of a copy of Disney stuff. And I worked directly at Disney Imagineering doing model building, which is a really good experience. And then I kind of went back into doing more makeup effects. And that's kind of where I am right now. Uh, I spent the past four or five years over fractured effects, working on things like Swamp Thing and Aquaman, Army of the Dead, um, Westworld. Those are the films and, and TV shows that pop into my head. Okay, I, I think one of one of the shows that stands out is uh, um, Last Samurai. We got to build a mechanical horse that Tom Cruise was on. Oh, that's yeah, cool. up and fell over. <laughs> wow, it was, it was a very expensive horse, but uh, it was great working on it. It was a great crew that, we, that I got to work with on that. Probably better uh, than the, the one. Uh, You've worked Bob's. on Babylon Five as well. Like uh, my 5? father did designs. Oh, okay. oh I'm sorry. 
That's oh, okay. So your father. So your father. He, he oh, was wow. a, my father was an illustrator. Yeah, he worked at Marvel Comics in the seventies. Really? Uh, oh wow. Okay. They, they wow, even better. And somehow uh, somehow right out there he ended up spending at least six months or so there. Oh, hey, Chad, Chad's really going to be sad. Yeah, yeah. I know. Wow. Chad, uh, like, Chad that's our, uh, awesome. He worked on Star Wars. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. He worked on Star Wars. Yeah, he, he, he worked on uh, Star Lord, which I, I believe became Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yes. Star Lord, yes. And oh, wow. Okay. wow. He, he was mostly a colorist. He did, did a lot of the coloring, although they did let him do a few other things at the same time. Uh, there, there was that's a. Cool. There's a uh, blog that someone put out recently about him and his time at Marvel, photos that I'd never seen, uh, which was kind of kind of exciting. I'll bet and I've I, got some of those comic books because that was my prime buying time right there. Yeah, wow. there was some great great work produced at that time, and and you can see where things have evolved out of that era. Mm -hmm. Our absent castmate Chad Hunt. Uh, did inking for Marvel, I think, mm -hmm. in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, he did a bunch really? of Wolverine. Really? Like, he's and... that old, too? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, he'll, he'll be mad no at me if I'm wrong. I'm just guessing. I got a stack of his comic books but, that he worked on. But uh, anyway. Um, yeah, that's awesome, though. Interesting. So that's... So anyway, uh, glad, and then I, glad. These days, I mostly... I mostly paint. I do some some sculpting, some digital sculpting, some illustration and design work. Um, I, I think in this industry you need to be flexible, and I, I like moving yeah. around. I like it if I get to do some fabrication or get to do a little bit of light machining or something. It's it's it's, ni it's nice to to move around rather than just being stuck in one one position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, thanks for for being on here. We appreciate your yeah, time. Yeah, really. Thank you. Uh, so, what? Uh, well, let's let's do a couple of little pieces that we normally do, and then we'll get into uh, the nest. Um, so, I think probably right now is time for taglines <laughs> with Chad, as played by. <laughs> who wants? Who wants Bill to do Mulligan, the right? You want to? Yeah. You want to uh, sure. take them, Bill? Okay, right. Sure, because these these are some primo taglines. They're not always good, but but these three solid. They're so, usually <clears throat> not good. No, they're usually terrible. <laughs> taglines for the nest. The first one is, "The terror has hatched." Oh, that's okay. a good one. That works. I mean, that works. Yeah, it's fine. good. It's good, mm -hmm. but I think the next one is a classic. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Why is the cheese moving? Oh no! Ew! Ew! No! Okay, that made me a little bit sick. Okay. Yeah. No. It's it's, it's moving because no. the terror has hatched, and that's what happens. Yeah. That is so grody. Um, <clears throat> and then this one, I guess this one would also fit pretty well with the wildly inaccurate poster. Roaches have never tasted flesh until now. She's just an appetizer. Well, that's disrespectful. <laughs> Why is the cheese moving? Oh my gosh, that is that. I want that on. Uh, that should be a poster on the wall. That's a that's a bumper sticker right there. Okay, yeah. and that's been taglines with Chad, as played by Bill Mulligan. <laughs> See, Chad, when you're not here, the taglines get good. <laughs> they get good really. I mean, there wasn't a single, uh, you know, the most terrifying creation ever. Yeah. None of them. None of those. No, those generic good. ones. Uh, you can't. You couldn't put "Why is the cheese moving?" for the Last Samurai or something. I mean, there's a very small subset of films <laughs> where that would be appropriate. This is true. Uh, let's take a quick look at the posters because this is so outrageous. Oh um, boy, I love it. I well, love I, it. I, it, has, I mean, it doesn't make sense, and I'm I don't. Sure, care. I got people to want to rent it. I don't know about no. The, it got me never to rent it. it, it the first oh, time okay. I saw this movie was two days ago, um, <laughs> because this this screamed at me as like, uh, do I really want to see giant roaches having sex with beautiful women? And uh, you know, you reach deep into your soul, and the answer was no. Yeah, no, I, 
you well, love it, humanoids from the deep. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but they were humanoids. <laughs> they were humanoids. It's not as awful. Mm. Awful. It's bad. But, you know. uh, but the uh, Lisa Langlois said she was a little uh, <laughs> oh, horr- horrified yeah. when she saw this. Although over the years has come to be able to laugh at it, but you know, nothing anywhere near like that. And she's very careful about uh, the types of scenes and things that she's in. So. Mm. <laughs> didn't she, want to be portrayed on sign off in this poster. No, she yeah. did not. No, you One take your those. family to the movie theater. I'm in this movie. It's like, is that you on the poster? Oh no, nothing like that happens, Mom. It's okay. <laughs> well, I guess she's not Margot Robbie. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, y'all don't know the y'all don't know uh, the yeah. about her taking her brother to see her movie. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. 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 This Sorry. Is the, uh, Sorry. Uh, audience. Spanish poster, I think. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Cecilio's is killer, but I don't know what the depressing. You know what though? Like this is so bad because it literally shows. Well, technically, they do morph into a human, right? Or they take over, they become it. But it looks like he's morphing into la cucaracha, a a velociraptor or something. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. Like what is? Oh, it does say la cucaracha. Sorry, like my screen is like really small. <laughs> I just think I that's thought so this misleading. was a Czechoslovakian poster, but I don't know. No, it's 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 Spanish. La Cucaracha oh, okay. is like right up there. Um, oh, it does. Oh, I can't. So see they it. actually play the song in in the movie. Yes, right, they do. Right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> It really feels like it's from a different era, this poster. It doesn't feel like a, an 80s poster. It, it feels more no. 60s. It, it looks like the, f- ah. like the 50s or something, so, right? I mean, however that's pronounced, the, um, the murder is, is uh, Predators. Oh. Uh, yeah, so. Predators. But like murder, it's like murder as a as, as, as sense of... Like, killer assassin, killer assassin predators. Predators. Like, killer yeah, predators. there you go. That would be it. That's probably the... It's a little you redundant, know, killer predators, but okay. Yeah. Assassins, assassin predators. Okay. I mean, no that um, that first poster is classic. I mean, that is just a it 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 is deceptive. It, it but you ex- yeah, you expect things to be deceptive in posters. Uh, but and, and I certainly... okay, so I I didn't see this movie as a child, but I remember the poster. Yeah. Okay, so it is memorable. that says something. Like I I'll never forget it. I mean, clearly I didn't. <laughs> understand the implication let's, let's, of that. I thought uh, he was no. just killing her. Julian, if it's, <laughs> if it's okay with you, we usually do a, a section called First Impressions, and we'll go ahead and shorten it up this time. Just oh, no, me. don't take your time. It's it's fine. It's, okay. Do, do, okay. Do, do, do your podcast, man. <laughs> so um, maybe we should ask Julian what his first impressions of the movie were. Well, that could be interesting. No, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did Not... zip through it. I zipped through it today, so... I don't feel like I gave it its fair um, watching as I hadn't. Well, I can tell you the special effects are (laughs) phenomenal. (laughs) So that is a fact. No complaints Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. It it definitely felt like. So oh. let's have Bill uh, do, the, do his first sure. impressions here. Yeah, you might say, why did I pick a film I hadn't seen and whose poster didn't make me want to see it? it you know, it, it always did feel like there was a little bit of a hole in there. And um I was looking around for something to pick and I I scanned through the internet. People were putting this on lists of films that didn't get enough credit or needed to be rediscovered. And I'm always happy to find something I haven't seen that I like. And this is one of them. I was very pleasantly surprised. I'm not a big bug fan. Uh, You know, roaches don't really skeeve me out that much unless my, one of my cats drops a legless roach as a, you know, offer a love token on my face in the middle of the night, which has happened. Oh, see, not roach, palmetto bugs, which is what they call the giant roaches down south, fooling nobody. Um, But they don't normally (laughs) gross me out that much. So, you know, people swimming in giant, I just figured it was a lot of roaches. I didn't know it was a monster movie, really. I didn't know that that we were going to get this crazy Lovecraftian John Carpenter's The Thing showing up all of a sudden. And uh, that was cool. Yeah, I, I really like this. I like the characters. Um, I think the villain is great. She's really villainous and, you yeah. know, not apologetic about it. Yeah, it, it, she's kind of unique. She really enjoys her work. The scene with the cat. 
the scene with the cat got me the glare, the glare from my wife that I so often get when I inflict these movies on her. It's like, what's going to happen to the cats? Like, I don't know. I haven't seen this movie, but I'll bet it's not going to be good. And indeed it wasn't. Um, but yeah, no, this is a lot of fun. This is such an eighties movie and, uh, it deserve, it does deserve more attention than, than it gets because it's not just the let's gather up a bunch of roaches and throw them on our poor long suffering cast. There's some of that, but there's also a lot of, uh, really some good monster stuff and good acting. Uh, These are, these are some nice actors in here. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy. I'm glad I picked it, and I kind of wish I'd seen it sooner. But no, nah, you know, actually, I'm glad. No, nah, it's it's fun to watch these things for the first time and then talk about it with you guys. So excellent. I agree. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, let's let's hear from Crystal. But first, if you, I don't know if anybody heard the alert on my phone. That was my phone telling me I just got a new podcast from. The Gothic Cottage, Crystal's YouTube channel. Wow. Oh, my God. Are you <laughs> really pimping my channel out right now? Yeah. Since Jeff brought it up, we should, you know, let, let's not just leave. Uh, Gothic Cottage is the uh, pod, okay. uh, sort of YouTube channel videos that Crystal <laughs> and often her husband do where they all kinds of good stuff. I, it is really, yeah. really good. And you should be one of the thousands of people who are listening, watching, me. watching these mm-hmm. things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's going down. I don't know why people want to watch me, but I appreciate it. And so mm-hmm. I thank you. That is all. It's yeah. Great. Like so Crystal. Yes, sir. What did you think of the nest? Oh, I, okay. So <laughs> I loved the nest. I will say that the special effects were the best part of this film though. That is, and I'm not <laughs> saying it just cause Julian's here. I, I mean that like I, yeah. There's a lot of good gore in this, and I am here for that, especially. Uh, <clears throat> I will say that I thought it was pretty crappy what the writer did to the little waitress girlfriend and the dad. Like, like it's, so, it's so crappy. Here you have this, like, girl come in. I'm from L.A. Sorry, sorry, Julian. But, like, I'm from L.A., and I'm going to, like, come in here, and I'm going to totally steal your boyfriend, and mm-hmm. then your dad's going to die, and then you're going to die. And that was really sad to me. I thought she got pooped on, and that is all about that. Uh, aside from that, I think the story is very interesting and very gross because I <clears> – <throat> I don't like cockroaches. cartridges. I don't, I don't like them. I don't like how they, how they're crunchy and stuff. It's super, it's, it's a really kind of. So when you're chewing them or. Yeah. I was going to say, you don't, when you're you, supposed to eat when them. When you're stepping on them. <laughs> oh, okay. Stepping on them. Well, that okay? makes more sense. They crunch. Sure. Okay. They it's like, and I don't, I don't like that. That's gross. Um, but sorry, I'm <laughs> off. Um, I think the acting was great. I think that the lead was good i when when the cockroach just took over the dad see and his eyeball pops out i mean like mm-hmm. come yeah. on it's real i if you haven't watched it I'd, i would be shocked if any of our viewers haven't seen this because i think I this is that. really kind of yeah it's it's kind of a big one because it's really quite good and it has a cohesive story which is a win from the 80s let's be mm-hmm. real uh so i loved it i'm super glad that uh we got to watch this beautiful feast of the eyes as it were <laughs> okay yeah, yeah good stuff gotta, gotta yeah. love the eyes um mm-hmm. i had seen this as a uh I don't know. I saw this a few years ago. It was uh, on Amazon Prime, and it's still there, but it's I think three or four dollars now. Uh, you you can, as we're recording this, you can get it on Tubi. But I I thought it was fun, and I sort of was. People were hinting at me that it was not good, uh, but I enjoyed the heck out of it. I would agree mm-hmm. that the best thing about it is the effects, and. Listening to uh, the director, uh, Terrence Winkless, does a commentary on the Blu-ray. And he does a great job of identifying all the mistakes he makes because he is a first-time director. Oh. And so when you, I, it's not something I paid a lot of attention to, but when I watched it during the commentary, that made sense. That's some of the things he did. We can, we can talk about that later. Um, most, mostly just to save time and therefore money. Okay. Hmm. 
Oh, well, sure. I mean, so, <laughs> time is money. Yep. And he was be given, being given a chance by uh, the Cormans, right? Which is uh, their thing, you know? Yep. Give, give people a chance. So uh, I, I enjoyed the heck out of this. Um, so, Julian. Yes. What you said you. So, what specifically did you do on the on, on this show? You said you did some puppeteering, but so we have, in terms of effects, let's let's. I'm just going to throw some pictures up. Sure. And first, I'm going to throw some other ones up. Bill, I put this one together because I figured you left it out for a sure. reason. But I, I thought I would just for. And before we go any farther, I have to say this has something <laughs> to trigger multiple people. Right. We've got. Crunchy cockroaches. Yeah. We have uh, uh, maimed or, or uh, uh, cats. Yeah, and yeah. cats. Yep. <laughs> and we have I care a more. crawling dog, I guess. dismembered I hand, which is no. actually yeah. what I why I think Chad is. Really I mean, Chad, yeah. Okay, so Julian, Chad reason, can't but... handle disembodied hands. <laughs> like it's a weird thing. It's no, that he no has thing. To... No, no thing. He can. Yeah. <laughs> Ex yeah, he can watch yeah. everything, no problem. But for some reason, that the disembodied hand. We, is we all have our thing. We all have yeah. things that, mm -hmm. that just get us to the core. Um, <laughs> so here's the cat. Yeah, well, the dog on top. Oh, look at that. Now, the yeah. cat. Uh, the per person that I was, and not to interrupt your flow. But you were working with Carrie Howe, correct? I was working with Carrie Howe. He got the job. We were, we were friends. Uh, it was mostly us building this stuff. And then he brought various people in to do sculpting. And I mean, I was pretty green at the time. I remember like on the dog fabricating muscles. I think we made sculpted generic sort of linear muscle forms and cast them up in hot melt vinyl and then oh, cool. them on and glued them. Uh, I remember doing that and maybe with the cat it was probably it was probably an overall sculpture, and then we did a similar thing with the cat. And Kerry was inspired by Bill the cat with with this character, <laughs> and definitely the thing. And um, mm -hmm. what was the other? So Bill the cat was the model for this. Was the... yeah, Bill the cat was definitely the model. That, that's what he kept on saying when he was sculpting it. <laughs> I, I'll, hey, I'll let you. Uh, no, I can I ask? I oh, can yeah. I ask you a question? Um, sure. Hot melt vinyl. I've always wondered. That doesn't seem to get used all that much, and it's such a cool material. I've never worked with it myself. Um, it, it's, why it's, is it not used that often? Silicon. Silicon. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Because yeah. hot melt vinyl is great, and it's pretty cheap, <laughs> but you have to heat it up, so it has the danger of being yeah four hundred degrees or so, and um, yeah, it's also fairly toxic. Oh, yeah, wow. When you're heating oh, it up, well, that's pulling fun. vinyl chloride out and, and whatever else. And it's 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 and it's an unpleasant material to work for. It's all we had at the time. So mm -hmm. it just weren't really available. And the great thing about homo vinyl is it does glue with super glue. You can sign out that oh. stuff. It, it glues yeah, very, cool. very easily and quickly, even though it creates sort of a hard, chunky little area and there's yeah. very soft, gooey stuff. Well, it looks fantastic. I mean, it looks mm -hmm. meaty. And we still yeah, use like thermogel for, which is similar to hot melt vinyl for some gags because it stretches so much. Mm -hmm. You get those, you know, where you have, see someone wrapped in some kind of membrane and they stretch and push through it. Thermogel is popular with that kind thermogel. of thing. And it's also a little tricky to paint. Uh, there, yeah, there's... I was going to wonder about that. It would be, probably have to be intrinsic. In color. You, yeah, you tend to. And then you eat with oil paints or, or vinyl tints, and then you can use toluene. There's a few tricks to painting it, mm -hmm. uh, but none of them are that pleasant because <laughs> it's so scratchy, yeah. and you want the yeah. paint to hang on. But I love the little antenna on the cat watch. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I nice... like the way it moved. It was yeah. creepy. That was well, but... very effective. It has the little pictures that are coming out of its mouth too. At first, yeah, I couldn't tell what that was. And, and I'm wondering if Ralph, I'm wondering if Ralph puppeteered because I wasn't, I don't remember being there the day they were puppeteering that stuff. I, I was there for the Queen puppeteering that, but I was oh, not. Cool. I don't remember I, any any of the cat. 
I in the little chat we had, he said he did the Queen, but uh, yeah, that's right. He was there for the Queen day, so I'm not sure who who puppeteered this, but it was a long time ago, and my memory is a little fuzzy. <laughs> so we also have um, so the, the oh, Queen yeah. top and bottom, and then in the middle is the Robert Lansing thing, who also has yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Kerry, as far as I know, Kerry designed all this stuff. They, they, I don't remember them giving us, they may have get, given us some very crude thumbnails at best, but I think Kerry was, was inspired by the thing and by um, trying to think of some other influences. I think, Bill, you had mentioned uh, when you were saying what it felt like before, you, you would, you'd mentioned some some uh names that are, they're eluding me right now you said the thing and you said um anyway it's okay yeah uh. <laughs> I, but yeah he he did the designs he did a lot of the sculpting we had another sculptor which i could remember i was trying to look through credits and so on and see if i could find that the other sculptor's name but that didn't turn up um but it was mostly Harry and the other bloke. I did a little bit of sculpting, but it was more basic stuff. I did some fabrication and light mechanics. I mean, we learned the hard way with the cables on the Queen. We had 20 foot cables, and we realized that you can't have 20 foot cables. There's just so much resistance. We had to shorten everything way, way up. Because you'd, you'd be, have these big, uh, levers to, to move an arm up and it would just move up a little tiny bit. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess the other film it would remind me of, especially the father's transformation is Cronenberg's The Fly. Yeah, I could see, oh, although yeah. it was Fly was after this, it was Fly. I, yeah, I, I think the, the dates, uh, the, the Fly is around 86 or so. It's so close mm -hmm. that I don't yeah. know that yeah. one could really influence the other that much, but I think, I think the name I, I threw out there was Lovecraft. He's Lovecraft. That's that's um, that's that's the definitely. Yeah. He was, Gary was very. He loved uh, the imagery from Lovecraft. Uh, he was definitely definitely influenced by that. I, I think he did. He, he he made. I wish I had the maquettes that he'd made for some of this stuff. He had maquettes that he he sculpted up. Uh, he, oh yeah. He, he was really motivated person. Well, you showed us a picture earlier. Um, I think maybe before we started of the full. There yeah. we go. Yeah. That is that is absolutely gorgeous, and I don't think it's they hilarious showed enough that it of like it. has balls. It has <laughs> like, like it totally yeah, that's has. What I was going to ask. What are these? Are these? <laughs> Those are no, Well, okay, the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that that's just a beautiful piece of work right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it was all. It was a mix of of you know we we I try. I think on this one he took a skeleton and. Mm figured out a really clever way of molding like the rib cage because skeletons are tricky things to mold to the rib cage and he made a mold so he didn't have to buy a bunch uh, budget was very low so he we cast up all the skeleton pieces and it was all completely fabricated i think the some of the joints were um parts from drum kits that, that like mm. clever clevises that you'd find on a drum kit he, he bought a bunch of those I mean, he really did a good job of of making stuff for there is little money. It was it was pretty impressive. But I'm just seeing this. I'm noticing this for the first time. So there's a little round metal thing right at in the center of the pelvis. Yeah. What yeah. Is that, is that like, the yeah. support? I, I think that was a pick point uh, yeah. to either puppeteer or move it around for sure. for close up shots because we assumed that the whole thing wasn't ever going to be seen unless it's a very wide shot. But yeah, it is okay. sort of a shame it didn't get. Yeah, it wasn't I know. Wide, uh, in all of its glory, it, it kind of <laughs> reminds me a little bit. Didn't wasn't there the a similar kind of composite creature in Leviathan, which it we did, does. and that it came does. a couple of years after this. I like this one better. This is just a, a, a uh, really... there was yeah there was mm. it was laying on the table, and they just mm -hmm. I don't know why when the effects artists do such a great job and then the cameras they're, they're like afraid to show it you know they yeah you know, they'll do it quick yeah, cuts. Yeah, i know yeah. ralph what movie was it we did that ralph worked on that was it the blob oh. or there was some or no, no trick-or-treat maybe where he he made this big demon thing and yeah. it got like 
a yeah. second on the screen. I mean, I understand if you're making robot monster, you don't want to dwell on the monster any more than you have to because people are going to see the zipper. But when you've got a thing of beauty yeah, like right, this, right. Oh. yeah, this is uh, awesome. So Julia provided a couple other shots of this. Uh, oh, yeah. A, a yeah, I think more. that's Christine Papalexis in the background there. She was puppeteering on it as well. I didn't think she got a credit. Hmm. And I have no idea whose arm that is. And that was in Bronson Caves, of course. What, oh, what wow. was her name again? Christine Papalexis. She does a lot of puppeteering. Okay. Uh, puppeteering fabrication type work. And that's in Bronson Caves, you thought? Yeah, this, 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 yeah. I, I, I remember the day pretty vividly, actually. It's fun shooting up there. I think I've shot a few things up at Bronson. And, and the so cave it... walls are covered with like attached things people put in for attaching things and foil and plaster and, and paint. That's <laughs> cool. It's been used. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's seen stuff. It's seen some stuff. <laughs> Ooh, it's, look at that. It looks so juicy. Oh, yeah. Sweet. You just take a bite right out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is all hot melt. The little bull sack uh -huh. things, the hot melt, the mussels. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a hamburger. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, it, it does a actually. Yeah, sinews of mussels. So. I mean, it was so, either that or foam latex. Mm, yeah, and foam latex is great, but it doesn't have that translucency that you get from right. Your right. Mm -hmm. So, so and, what again were these uh, ball sacks supposed? I just assume because there's a scene where. Uh, I can't remember the character's <laughs> name with, with a woman yeah, they're, in and they're hanging down. They, they right, the big some ones, egg, yeah. egg sacks for the... Oh, okay. sure. Well, I suppose the queen would cool. carry them around with her, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. So where, how did, what were the, uh, when you're puppeteering this, what kinds of things could you do or what was the articulation? I think uh, there was, there were several people pushing the rig. And then the the pincers moved, and various arms moved. And I think I can't remember how many of them. It might have been four of the arms moved, and we had them set up so we they could interact with the performers. And I think they, I'm pretty sure there must have been some jaw movement on some of them for close-ups. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, we were definitely ambitious in terms of what we wanted to do, but the knowledge. I mean, this is early days. I think for for. I, I was definitely green, and I think Kerry was still figuring out how to do things at the time. Uh, well, you said something to me about how much, uh, what crazy hours he worked. We, uh, we were working, I mean, it, it seemed like that period of time, all the way up to sort of mid-90s, you just, it's almost like you were expected to work as many hours as was needed. If you worked all night and you kept, kept to keep going the next day, you would. Uh, you, you'd catch a few hours of sleep here and there. Well, especially once you start shooting and if you're still building and you've got a tiny crew mm -hmm. and that part of that crew is going to set you you're frantically trying to get stuff done for the next day and do whatever it is they need done on set so you can go days with with just a few hours of sleep <laughs> it's if I, thankfully it's like things working have on an down. indie film <laughs> yeah. 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 things have gone down a lot i mean now we wait work i, I mean if you're on set you're still working 12, 14 hours easily. But if you're in an effect shop, now it's more eight to 10 hours is, is unless, you know, you've hit your deadline and then there's yeah. the occasional, right, right. It's, it's rare, at least in the places I've been working in, thankfully. <laughs> there's only so long you can do that many hours. Right. Yes. And I think I'm, I'm done with that. Uh, Good. Well, that's the impression I get from uh, Dirk. Rogers at can be they it's it's much more like a regular job uh, yeah and when they were them. when they were producing the walking dead then he would just have them they just made up zombies when they were slow to have them ready for <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i remember you Different like deaths yeah. and stuff having them ready yeah. to go just in case it, it's sure. easier when you've got mm -hmm. you know, a reasonable budget and, and people setting uh, realistic deadlines and a shop that's organized and, and is large enough where people don't have to do insane hours. But when you've got a, you know, early days, the 80s and low budget films, I mean, as I said, there was 
mostly just Kerry and I and some other people that kind of came in and out that were were doing all those effects. I mean, it's looking back, we were insane to think we yeah. could. <laughs> well, I think Rob Botton on uh, the thing, like, Boating. pretty much had a breakdown afterwards, right? Yeah, he, had, he was hospitalized. Yeah. 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 I, I don't doubt it. I completely understand. Mm -hmm. And, and you yeah. put everything you have into these things. Right. And you don't know uh, how much is going to be seen. You don't realize that sure. it's probably going to get mostly cropped. And if it gets right. cut, I know. <laughs> oh, that's got to be so devastating working. Uh, I think I've gotten used to that. It's like mm -hmm. I just make things and I make things as well as I can. And if they use it, fantastic. If they don't, mm -hmm. I, you know, I did a good job. Maybe it'll end up uh, in behind the scenes or somewhere else. Is that I, I, is that one of the reasons you didn't see this movie when it when it came out? I mean, is it is it just so disappointing to work on something and then go see it and see how little of everything you did actually makes it on the screen? Uh, why didn't I see it? I don't. I, I see some horror film. I'm not drawn to horror films, so I didn't go out and see every horror film. And I'm not sure why I didn't go out and see this one. It's like, I guess if the timing's right, I, I'm yeah. not opposed to seeing things. But there's a lot of stuff I've worked on over the years that. I'd missed out and I thought, yeah, I should go and see that. Even uh, Sweet Tooth I recently worked on. I think I've seen three episodes of that and I feel like I need to see hmm. more of that. We, we did a bunch of things on that. We did the I've heard good things about that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it wasn't even bad. It wasn't that it was bad. It's just, you know, time. Sure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have yeah. some time now. Right, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. oh, you're making me yeah. sad now. I'm sorry. Well, uh, yeah. when I was talking to Julian earlier, he backed up a story that we have in uh, what well, was in the, the trivia or the details that we had looked up. But the director also said it on the commentary. And then Julian said the same thing about the cockroaches. <laughs> With the rain <laughs> gloves. <laughs> yeah, what was that? The cockroach rain? Uh, we, we, we asked where, where he found or where the cockroaches came from. And he informed us that he got, got them off the streets at night. Oh. It sounded... What? Like someone, like he went out and like, how and, did, and, and, man, and, not, they can't be easy to catch. Like, I, I guess they have their way when you're used to dealing with cockroaches. Maybe they use the fire extinguisher like in the, uh, the film. <laughs> well, if you look at the, uh, I forget how they're listed in the film credits, but it's something to do with eye, animal, world, or, you know, world yeah. of animals or something like that. Well, when you look at the additional crew on IMDb, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people whose last name is I, <laughs> listed as animal wrangler. <laughs> okay. So era, era. They kept on getting an error message, but it just put it up. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> they didn't need ten people to wrangle that cat, so uh, it's pretty safe to say they were. Hey, Crystal. By the way, if you need to, just put out a dish of cat food on a nice hot night. And then walk out and every five or ten minutes and throw a net over Ew. it, and you'll get all okay. the cockroaches you will ever need. Yeah. Well, he said <laughs> Winkless imagine. said something about how uh, one of the guys told him. He said, "Boy, you guys look really wore out." And he go, "Well, when you ask him for a thousand cockroaches, <laughs> we're pretty much have to like, go I've out been all, up night. all night. <laughs> yeah. I've been up all night." <laughs> well, I, I understand really that. <laughs> Um, all right. Yeah. Well, you have any, uh, stories that you remember from or when you were doing it or any, well, you told me something about Roger Corman. Uh, I had barely, cause I was so new to the industry. I barely heard of Roger Corman and I didn't realize how uh -huh. important he was to the, to the, to the B movies of fifties, sixties and all, all the way up to, to the probably yeah. nineties. I don't know. when. I don't know how long he kept on going, but he popped up. We, we were we were in a garage uh, in a house in Silmar in LA, and he turned up one day to to see what the progress was on that that big queen creature, and it was just seeing him standing there on the on the fried LA grass, <laughs> observing what we were doing. It, it, it was it was very cool meeting him. And he, he definitely he definitely got a sense that he knew he knew what was going to work and what wasn't. He, he's been doing this stuff a while. Mm -hmm. 
I, I didn't have any specific point. It was just kind of fascinating meeting him. And I got to work down at the at the mill, which is you know where they shot the interior scenes. Right, right. And, which is his studios. Um, That's awesome. And I think on a, on a weird side note, the the band Australian man the church because I just come out from Australia. I, I was pretty new to this country, and the church. Um, Australian band I really liked and I think they've been played on K-Rock on the radio station here a lot and they happen to be uh, practicing on a stage next door to us so I, I walked in and it's like oh my god it's it's a band that I really like <laughs> right here so that was kind of fun for me oh when you were doing the the uh, studio shots the yeah exactly yeah. all those house interiors were uh, on okay. the sets it, it's fun watching the film and seeing them kind of like crawling out of bronson caves and suddenly they're at the beach at a totally different location and then white uh, the lighthouse is somewhere else and everything it was so chopped up i mean I, I, obviously not uncommon for films but when you're involved and you know that those locations have nothing to do with each other yeah yeah no that's one of those things i didn't you don't think about unless you get into some behind the scenes stuff, you know, like a lot of times when somebody walks around the corner <laughs> and suddenly and then they cut, yeah. they're, they're like at a totally different location. <laughs> e editing is a very powerful thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know. Uh, any other questions for Julian? Uh, any other technical effects? questions, Bill? Any anything that? Uh, oh, any God. technical yeah. questions? Well, yeah. I, I'm happy to bore everyone with technical. Oh, stuff. that's not boring. That's awesome. Like, no, yeah, that's, I, I, it's, wish I could found. I found more. If I had a little more heads up, I, I would. I know I have more photos from that from that time because I, I I've always been into photography and and. Obviously, it was all 35 millimeter back then. So I, I have boxes of 35 mil. It's, it's a lot easier to do with digital, but I right, had right. a lot of shots mm -hmm. at, at the time. Um, how, how, uh, how easily do the actors, you know, deal with these large scale? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, um, I think they always find it fascinating. And then you, you, you've got to learn to help them in terms of what it can do and, and what's realistic and what isn't and that they might need to help motivate something it's not going to just do something on its own and i noticed that in some of the shots where the actress was helping kind of pull out, pull away or, or be gripped by the creature so it's like it's a very weak puppet you, you have to actually act with it it's 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 not going to do it for you uh. <laughs> And and I think when you're puppeteering, I think getting that that timing right, especially when you're working with a lot of people, having a, a good either director or AD call out the uh, the blocking, so each thing happens. If you're doing a, some complicated movements and getting everyone to time, and you often don't have a lot of time to practice. I mean, if it's a Jurassic Park or something like that where there's budget, you get the puppet and you get to practice. But things like this. You were up on my building it, you rolled it on a set, you barely know how the thing works, and you're figuring it out in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. It's a horrifying thing to do. That's, yeah. that's where yeah. our horror comes in, <laughs> is, is, is hoping and praying the thing doesn't, the cable doesn't snap. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I guess that, that's the one thing with that happens. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, just yeah. to figure out how to make it work. Yeah. I mean, I, I was working on something recently and the cable did break. Thankfully, it was the last shot. We did the thing and the cable broke and they're like, right, we got it in the oh, can. It didn't matter, we got it. And, yeah. and we're just like, good, good, because it's not doing yeah. anything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's an hour to repair it. It's done. Um, well, you're welcome to uh, stick around if you want. We're probably gonna you know, touch on uh, some of the actors here for a few um, minutes. I'm curious to, to hear what, if you don't mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, yeah. no, of course. Please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we Glad just, to have you. you know. Well, this was one of my guys. Uh, yeah. Robert, uh, Robert Lansing. Lansing. And what uh, I really got into him was 12 o'clock high. You didn't put a picture of 12 o'clock high on here. But... No, I didn't. But I figured you'd bring it up. <laughs> if it's a Western. <laughs> TV show. He was so no, no, creepy that was a World War II as like TV the show. zombie oh, dude, oh, okay. as his 
has taken over. Like, look he at was, the, that he? face. Yeah, he did a great job. It was really sufficiently creepy. When I when I first saw him, I'm like, I know this guy from a bunch of stuff. I'd forgotten about the 4D man, which is one of my old favorites. Yeah, but that's, that's a cool Mr. One. Mr. Seven in Star Trek. This was an episode I that was a, it was a pilot. It was a pilot for what should mm-hmm. have been a great series. Him, Terry Gar. He's he's basically like a Doctor Who type character from the future. This was a Star Trek show set in the current time, and he comes back in time to help us out. And Terry Gar is his secretary. I mean, they meet cute. It would have been a great series, absolutely great. And and they just didn't pick it up. That, but that it's character one of my that he played in Star Trek, that Terry was fascinated with that character. He was very excited to work with the Robin Lansing because he because he oh, wow. as cool. that character. Well, and we will be doing Empire of the Ants on 70s at some point because... uh, I thought we already did it. Oh, we did do Empire of the Ants. I was thinking of Kingdom of the Spiders. Oh, Oh, yeah. Well, eh, Kingdom, (laughs) Empire, Spiders, (laughs) Ants, whatever. Um, Yeah, the 4D Man is is kind of cool. It's interesting. I love that movie. It's a great Uh, concept. The director, uh, Winkless, said that... uh, if you and I didn't think about it before, but he was very deliberate and very slow about his reactions and his line readings. Uh, to the point of there was one scene where he takes a real long time to kind of give his take and turn and walk away. They ended up cutting every other frame out to oh wow, <laughs> so that it whoa, it moved then otherwise it just seemed like it was. Not so slow, I, which I, I thought was very weird. I, <laughs> what crystal? It gave the character a certain. I'm just thinking though. about how that how that would look in editing. Because even if you think there's not movement, there's still a little movement. Does it look a little yeah. stop motion? Well, I didn't notice I've, it when he. I've got so many thoughts in my head yeah. <laughs> that drives me bonkers. Yeah. Because you see all these YouTubers you, making all these jump cuts, and it's normal now. Yeah, like I, I know, see jump cuts and they don't crazy. bother me. See, for me, it doesn't because I watch so many YouTubers and when they're talking, they jump cut it and it's just so subtle and stuff. But it, if I were watching it in a movie before yeah. all this YouTube, I would be like, what what just happened? Well, what, you know, it's gotten better now here? because <laughs> the, the latest version of Adobe speed. Premiere has a thing where you can highlight where the jump cut is and it will make some kind of interpolation where it smooths it out as best it can. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I've noticed that on some YouTube channels where they, it's obviously a different, like they've cut, Mm -hmm. but there's sort of a, there's sort of a smoothing effect or something. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So the the doctor. Oh, I love her. Terry (laughs) Trees. um, The terror within, is she the mother of that? Or what am I thinking? I I think she might be. Isn't that the rapey one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or or wait, uh, like, is terror within is, or is it from the eighties? Because yeah, it's probably every pretty rapey. Movie is super yeah. rapey. Yeah, like come on, like I think I mean I was if shocked there's that a... this one wasn't. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, and she was great in Alienation, and and she was she played that character in a bunch, a bunch of the different uh, versions she's, of Alienation. But that you see, look at that top picture. She is genuinely happy. In her yeah. evil, you know, she like is her. she's she's not twirling her a mustache or anything. <laughs> but if people get hurt, you know what? If you're gonna make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. Yeah. And um, no, you, but you know. but the second one, Bill, is even better when she pulls her hand out. She, see, okay, this is how I can justify the poster because when she pulls her hand out of there, she practically looks like she just had an orgasm. She yeah, does. those cockroaches she biting her. I was, yeah. okay, I was she, wondering. She's like, about she's that. like, oh, they're biting me. It's like, what? Yeah, no, I, I thought, I thought, I wondered if that was something that got cut out of the movie that they had I some kind of it. venom so or something. I was waiting for her to turn mm-hmm. into a monster because, you know, yeah, her. Also, she never <clears> cleaned <throat> that bloody hand. Which is very unhygienic for for a scientist. I think she know. just she, liked it. Okay, I she guess. likes the blood. I didn't realize there was so many. She, she's TV don't kink shame her. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's one, two, three, four, five Alien Nation TV movies after the series ended. Yeah. Hey, hey, I you want to hear a story that. about what a moron I am? 
it was like sure. way after all these movies came out that one day we're watching one of these and I turned to my wife and it's like, oh, you know, in a way, alien nation could also be kind of like the word alienation. And she looked at me like every single damn person on earth pick that up the first time they saw the title. And it's been this many years before you had this epiphany. I'm like, okay, that's hurtful. Let's go on to another topic. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I did not pick up on that. All right. So I was wrong. Terror, the, the terror within is not the one I thought it was. So, oh, okay. Um, Are you thinking of the beast within? We're going to have to do that of one, just so I can remember the title. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, but she's also done, she's done a lot of different things. She's uh, been a producer, director, uh, a writer, uh, 15 credits as a writer. So she's hmm. very involved. Well, I loved her in this movie, so. Me too. She she's, looked like she was having like, fun. She, yeah, she's sexy. Like, she's got really mm -hmm. strong sex appeal. You know, without being, like, overtly sexual, if that makes sense. And, you know, most most of these mad scientists, when things go south, as they always do, they're full of regret and, oh, no, who would have thought <laughs> that making scorpions giant would, would lead to something bad? But she's just, just like, oh, my roaches have turned yeah. carnivorous. Did not see that coming, but color me intrigued. She's just yeah. having a great time. <laughs> yeah. She makes that comment about... Uh, she's accused of they say she's fired for illegal experimentation and she says i didn't i wasn't fired from mit but then she goes on to say but <laughs> <laughs> we do do some experimentation that doesn't follow the such and such guys you know yeah uh so yeah she's she's excellent frank luz is uh I don't know. He's one of those guys that looks familiar to me, but I can't. He, he looks he familiar. He reminds me of we're... Adam Driver. Okay. I know I a say little. that all the time because I'm kind of obsessed with Adam Driver, <laughs> but he looks like Adam Driver to me a little bit. I think bit. I'm the like, only person that you haven't described as looking like Adam Driver. Uh, but no, he does look familiar. <laughs> and then when I looked him up, yeah. no, I haven't seen him in that many things. And he hasn't done that many things. And I'm a little surprised because... He's good. He was good. In, yeah. in a role that we've seen a hundred times, usually played really stiffly and, and just by the numbers. He was likable. He was he was likable enough that I agreed <laughs> with Chris. Except that I he was bad. kind of a piece of poop. I would I, mean, I did feel bad about that waitress <laughs> that, you know, but but <gasps> here's the thing. Crystal, he was in love with that girl who came back. I mean, the waitress I was don't give a fudge okay you know he the dad says are you hey hey dude are you gonna marry my daughter and he's like <laughs> i really like her <laughs> but no now in, yeah, in like, fairness mm. the movie the movie treated her unfairly that way but i did like her death because she went out like a boss she was well, killing yeah. those roaches in more ways than i ever imagined you could kill a roach and then she didn't even get eaten she she went out on her own terms. She locked herself in the freezer and froze to death, which is no kind of fun. Fair enough. But better yeah. than being eaten by carnivorous roaches. Is it though? I don't know. I don't know. When he goes well, in there, and he's looking for there's eat? dead roaches everywhere. She she really took out a good number of roaches. Uh Frank Luz was had like 41 credits, but it's nothing Yeah. Not the kind of stuff I watch and mostly single episodes of television shows and that movie on the bottom, Ghost Town, was the one I could find that we might do in the future. Oh, it's it's an looks, '80s film. Yeah, it's a good it's poster. Like something. Oh, that's horror painful. western of some. But kind. yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, well, they, uh, Winkless did talk yeah. about uh, trying to add some comedy to his character. Um, mm. The little things like when they when he and uh, Homer get out of the car together, and they go around opposite directions. Yeah. But yeah. A little stuff like that. That makes him seem kind of dumb, but he said he didn't, that didn't bother him. Well, it um, wasn't and then too Lisa much. Lang it Wah, wasn't like was too the, funny the or detracted. No, 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 they didn't. Yeah. yeah. They didn't. There she is. I'm, I'm kind of rushing through these. Just because we're That's right. Pushing time. But um, she, uh, she yeah, was in a few I things. Now that. she's, she's got some good, good credits here. Well, and she's yeah. back. Um, you know, so this is this is the kind of research I do. I, I 
was trying to figure out how to pronounce her name. And I uh, searched video interviews, and it took me like five interviews before someone actually said her name. I, I felt like, oh, they're avoiding it because it's impossible mm -hmm. to say or something. And finally, uh, she introduced herself on a Bob, I am. Uh, but she's took like 10 years off, she said. And then uh, she took 10 years off to it. raise her kids. Yeah, exactly. probably. Yeah. Kudos to her for that. Yeah. In fact, she said, yeah, my son is like 12 years old now. So um, he's a little more self. And apparently uh, lots of people are, are really big into class of 84. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got a cult following. Saw a lot of a lot of people talking about that. Um, did you have you had Deadly Eyes on there? Deadly Eyes, That's Happy Birthday to Me is probably oh, the one yeah. the most mm -hmm. famous one. And then I'd like to I haven't seen Phobia, but it's directed Phobia. by John Houston. So I mean, yeah, that just sounds insane. It seems like we've talked about that before. I don't think we did an episode, but I swear I've talked. We've talked. About I think we talked about it when we did the visitor because we were talking about John. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the other, a couple other ones. The uh, so the waitress Nancy Morgan. Mm -hmm. Did you notice she was uh, John Ritter's wife? Oh. Oh. Wait, uh, you mean his first wife or something? Yeah. The one who was the waitress uh, in the restaurant. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and then uh, what was the other? It was something else. Oh, and, and that guy. You know, we talked about him a little bit, but uh, the guy that played her dad, Shaky Jake, he was yeah, kind of a Shaky. fun character. Jack Collins was his name, and he was in. Uh, so here's he only had 78 credits, but he he seemed super familiar to me. Um, he did some comedies, Jekyll and Hyde together again. He was in uh, the Towering Inferno. Yes, I yes, must have seen him in that a hundred times. I watched That's that movie about a hundred times. People probably saw him the most. So, and this was his last role. Last, last movie role. And then the other one that I thought this guy was like, kind of stole the show a bunch was Homer, Stephen Davies. <laughs> yeah. He was the exterminator. He was just. Yeah, he was funny. Oh, and, they, well, you... and uh, again, the director said he ad libbed a lot of that stuff. He said, we didn't use all his ad libs, but we used a lot of them. He felt like I kept waiting for him to die because usually the comedy relief doesn't survive these films. But uh... yeah, that's true. They kept him. Now, he doesn't seem to have many credits. Uh, he doesn't. And Winkless said he was familiar with him and that the problem was he did bad auditions. Huh. That if somebody could just go ahead and hire him, then he was he was great. He was fine. You see, yeah, he was yeah, great I've in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, maybe when he's got a little more time to see what's going on. But anyway. All right. I don't know where else we need to go. We're kind of uh, running out of time. Oh, we wow. do have some feedback. A couple on Poison for the Fairies. Oh. Yes. Yes. Uh, from Mona Lisa. Haven't heard from her for a while. Hmm. Great review again. I'm more of a classic era girl, but love the Groove Crew so much I have to watch. I'm laughing hearing Bill's kitty meow and having his cat backdrop with Jeff's deep dislike of felines. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's Not like a polar person. opposites. I wish one of these days you could do a top 10 favorite films for each of you. That would be so much fun. Oh. Ooh. Love you guys and girls. Can... So. Thank you. You, Thank know, you. you can call me a guy. I don't care. You can yeah. call me whatever. So anyway, yeah, you you're, you're absolutely me. right. I have to, I have to uh, whenever Bill's cat meows and throws its tail up into the screen, I have to, you know, withhold a grimace. It does make me laugh. Yeah. yeah. And then the cat will like, yeah. like, shove its booty. Uh, in yes, face. yeah. One of them's and on my lap right fun. now. That's yeah. like one of my favorite things to see. I love Sphinx cats. And things. Gregory Crosby says, "Is it possible DOH 1980s has yet to do Alligator?" Watching it, it, for it the is um possible. We do have yet yeah. to do Alligator. Yes, but watching I it would for like the to do Alligator. Time last night, 
this time as part of the last drive-in. It was on uh, Joe right. Bob. Oh. Okay. On Shutter. Ooh, Reminded me maybe? that a gleefully perfect creature feature this is. Best interrupted wedding reception ever. Yeah. Well, see, now I'm feeling like maybe we should do that instead of dolls. Maybe we need to give the people what they want because really it's all about well, you. I don't know. Dolls is such a, it's a perfect crystal pick. Yeah. It is yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, do but, you know how many dolls I actually have? I literally have probably 500 dolls. I'll tell you what, if, if someone else doesn't pick it before next, if, if yeah. it isn't picked before, then I'll, that'll be my next pick. If uh, Jeff or Chad don't pick it. Because I love alligator and what a hell of a pedigree, Louis Teague. Okay. I mean, John Sales. That's yeah, a yeah, okay. yeah. oh, yeah, and stuff. Uh, Street Tiger just put it out on 4K. Oh, Street so TV. are you? Do you, are you getting the Blu-ray, Jeff? I've been waiting for somebody to pick it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so you can. We also had a comment on Poison for the Fairies from Sean Parks. Um, hey, Shawnee. And he says about Poison for the Fairies, this sounds very interesting. It's on the schedule for tomorrow's Tuesday night movie. And then he comes back and says, really enjoyed this, quite singular, which I think is unique. Yeah, yeah. and that's true. Sean, yes, appreciate it. Good to hear true. from you. Yes, um, Sean. I think we have to stop yeah. right Missed there. Um, yes. Oh, so what are we doing next, Crystal? We're doing dolls. Decision. Okay, we're doing tubing. dolls. We're going to do Stuart dolls. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So make sure it's you join us for that one. Um, that'll be up two weeks. So, Julian, yes. thanks for hanging around. We didn't give you Thank much you time so to much. Talk. Yeah. You could, he, he was so good, too. Like, he didn't even try to pipe in or anything. He was just, like, listening and being. Acting like we were like, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I totally, I, I felt like, hey. Are we entertaining you? I hope so. Really appreciate <laughs> when when professionals come on, and really your work was fantastic. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I appreciate it. It worked from a long time ago, and yeah, well, yeah you've gone I on always, to great things. Oh, yeah. I always say this. I mean, movies are a group effort. It's it's there's no single person who makes this stuff happen. I mean, you really need a good a good crew, a good team. Um, it's and and we had a tiny group, but it was good enough to get this thing done. Yeah, and it's phenomenal, really. And, like, I'm sorry. And it's, it's phenomenal, phenomenal, really. Oh, thank you. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it was sort of nice seeing this stuff. I mean, there's always things that, that we sure. would like to improve, but it's like, yeah, for for the time and for the knowledge, it 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 actually looked looked presentable. Good for 35. <laughs> 35 years ago. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's why I'm like, I'm like, Oh no, no, no. That's why I judge eighties movies differently. Everyone's like, you like all these poopy movies. And I was like, cause it was from the eighties. If that was made now, now actually, even with this though, if this was made now, I'd still like these effects. Yeah. Oh that's yeah. Fact. If we made so you watch some really of that, the test. So, like we've done these anyway, <laughs> I, I did want to make a comment about Winkless talking about being a first time director that when he looks at it now, he's doing the commentary and he's going, I don't know why, why did I shoot that dialogue scene with the actor's backs to the camera? I, I don't understand. <laughs> and then he kept going, oh, damn, this is supposed to take place in New England. There's another palm tree. Oh, there's a palm tree there. You know? like, yeah, the, the, the audience watching it, I didn't think they're counting the palm Nobody tree. notices. Nobody <laughs> I notices. didn't notice that. They have lighthouses, you know, all over the place. So I, I didn't even think about Couldn't it. they have a lighthouse in California? I mean, yeah, like, yeah, why not? Because they have a coast. So You'd think he, he, it was supposed to yeah. be set in New England. And so they were trying to make an effort to, but. Wasn't cave, that one in like, Washington State that that White House, that uh, the lighthouse that they? Yeah, had. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Washington State or Oregon, depending who you, yeah. if you listen. To and the you, you know, or... Jeff, <laughs> we probably should have mentioned Winkless went on. He wrote the screenplay for The Howling. And, <gasps> yeah. And, and the writer, I love The Howling. It, yeah. The writer, the writer <laughs> of this film went on to do something. I think Crystal, you've said you like this. He uh, created the TV series Evil. Oh my God, I love evil. Oh yeah, yeah. I love evil. I hope it got. I think the, I think it did get renewed, but I think well now. Oh, you never. Yeah, now who die. knows, right? Uh, yeah, that's okay. I'm not gonna cry. No, I'm I'm not gonna cry. So both of those guys but went on really to do some good stuff. 
and and that's the Corman that's the Corman touch, right? Corman yeah. would find people, give them a chance, and maybe maybe it was good, maybe it wasn't. First films often aren't, but they went on to do things that they might not have ever done if they hadn't gotten that opportunity. So you know, we well, owe a lot to Roger Corman. And one quick Corman connection, the and you probably recognize it. You probably said this looks familiar. Uh, the two explosions, oh. one. One yes. in the uh, the exterminator's house, and the other one with the pickup going over the bridge. Those were from, humanoids uh, from humanoids the from the deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of course, the weightless, they yeah. literally said, "Here's this footage. Work it in." That's <laughs> so he had to come up with the yeah. scene to have that. Humanoids yeah. was the first film that the four of us, Chad, Jeff, Crystal, I, we did together. I believe okay. that's that was that our was like first four film. years ago. Uh, I know. Yeah, we did uh, we did a Fulci first. Oh, did we? Oh, we okay. did. It was City of Hell or something, right? Uh, uh, City of the Living Dead. Gates of yeah, City, yeah, Gates of Hell with with another name. I forget the other name. Hmm. That's it. I get those confused because it's like got three names and I don't know what to call it. I yeah. feel like humanoids is where we really gelled together because there's especially yeah. Crystal. Crystal had a few lines in that that still crack me up to this day yeah yeah so it was a super rapey movie like yeah, well <laughs> yes it was from the 80s huh yeah, yeah. from the 80s I'm gonna love it yeah all right well we need to uh sign off crystal and i are running yeah. a little bit late here um yep. oh yeah thanks yeah. again for Reason. coming sir yes oh, thank you Julie. Julie. Yeah, it was great talking to you i appreciate, I appreciate it. yes you were so it's awesome it was great to work uh meet you yeah, maybe we can. Uh, maybe there's another film that. Uh, yeah. Oh, sure. oh, absolutely. You're totally welcome to join us. Yes. Well, hopefully, absolutely. the strike will be over soon. You'll be too busy. Oh but. yeah. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. We're really yeah. hoping they can uh, get everyone's heads Come together. To but I understand right. you've got to. You've got as long to as they don't do AI of uh, effects. Well, right. Yeah, that that is changing the yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. And see, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly why this needs to happen. Is and because yes. it'll trickle yeah. down to every aspect yeah. of. No, if you're going to stop it, you got to stop it now. Okay, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Uh, All right. All right. Well, you stay in touch. Night. Great meeting you, yes, comments. Catch us again yeah. here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s. It's only decades of horror can do it. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the comments as well. And uh, let's say good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye.